as John Cleish would have said, now for something completely different. Uh, I made, or I'm in the process of making, a uh, hard cheese called Darby, an English cheese with sage in it. I started that a couple of days ago. It'll be six weeks at least before that video comes out. But I saved the whey uh, from making that cheese, and there was eight liters, two gallons of, of milk involved, and that's the leftover whey. And now I'm going to try making a Scandinavian cheese. It's a brown cheese. Uh, Halvor, if you don't watch uh, Gardening in Norway with Halvor, a YouTube channel, I suggest you go. He has excellent videos. He sent me, uh, after watching one of my videos and, and uh, trying to give me an idea of what to do with the whey, I guess, he sent me a cheese um, from Norway, and I won't attempt to pronounce that Halvor. It will now appear magically across the screen. It's a very long Norwegian word, and I really have no idea about the pronunciation. And what I'm going to make is something similar, I guess. It is a Scandinavian cheese called Mysost, M-Y-S-O-S-T. I really don't know for certain the pronunciation on that. But it is, in theory anyway, I haven't made it yet, it is quite easy to make. And it's a cheese that's ready to eat within 24 hours or less. Um, you just take the whey, which is now in that heavy bottom stainless steel uh, pot that I use for making cheese, and you bring it to a boil and then reduce it to a slow simmer, and that's what's happening there now. You can see some of the uh, curd that's forming. This is also, if you, I don't know what you add, I can't remember how, what you add to make ricotta, but you could make ricotta from that curd that's coming up and you boil it down slowly, evaporate it down, uh, and it turns into a fudge-like consistency. The cheese is brown. I have saved a small piece of the one that uh, Halvor sent me so I could have it to compare to what mine looks like. It, it depends on how far you boil as to whether you get a spreadable cheese or one that turns into a solid cheese that you could slice. So what I will get in the end, we don't know yet, I guess. Anyway, once it has boiled down considerably, you add cream. Um, I, the recipe that I'm following is, is pretty vague. It doesn't tell you how much of anything. So anyway, I've bought a, a, a pint, less than 500 milliliters, a U.S. pint of heavy cream that I will be adding. And by that time, this should be reduced enough that it'll be going into a, a smaller saucepan, I think. And then you... Uh, Put it in whatever you want to use for a mold that should be buttered or oiled with olive oil or something and refrigerate it until it solidifies as much as it's going to and you end up either something that's spreadable or something that you can bring out of the mold and uh, slice, which the one that Halvor sent me was sliceable and very good. I, it's very different. Um, there's nothing added, as I said, except some cream, but it is uh, a sweet cheese um, and that's just from concentrating the the sugars that are in milk the natural sugars when you keep boiling it down this reminds me of making a maple syrup you start with something that's quite a bit of volume and, and re keep reducing it down and it can take anywhere from 6 to 12 hours I don't know how long it's going to take it's a good rainy day project and this is the 6th of June that I'm making this and uh, it's a good day for a good day for making it. Uh, we're finally getting our first rainstorm since April, and it's not a violent rainstorm. It's just a nice soaking rain. So the gardens are appreciating it, and I've got a chance to be in the house doing something. So I'm going to have a, a, a look at this and see what I think of it. So I will bring you back when it's reduced further, and then when it starts changing color, etc. Until we have the finished product. Two hours into the reducing process, you can see this ring up around the level here. That's how much it has reduced, roughly an inch, I would say. There are more solids now. It keeps forming more solids, and I don't know, it may be a bit darker, I think. It still, still has a yellowish, lemony sort of tinge to it. It hasn't turned hasn't turned brown yet, so if that's any indication, that was two hours. I would say we've got at least six to eight more hours to go to get it down to 
a brown fudgy sort of consistency so I'll keep bringing you back I think it's going faster than I thought it would maybe I said that before this is now four hours roughly since I started it and if you can see that line there in the pot that's where it was when I started if not a bit higher than that it's now starting to take on sort of a caramel color it's a yellowish brown color it's concentrating more and more all the time I think in another hour or two I'll be able to move it into a smaller saucepan I just think in a smaller saucepan when it gets down that low it, uh, it will be less likely to stick to the bottom I'll be able to stir it better and I haven't mentioned so far but down below this video I will put a link to the recipe that I'm following but also a link to Halvor's uh, Gardening in Norway channel on YouTube. So if you haven't seen any of Halvor's videos, and I'd like to suggest that you go have a look at them. I always find them very, very well done. He's very knowledgeable of the things that he grows, and his, his videos are very interesting. So at least go have a look and hopefully subscribe to him. Bring you back in an hour or two. It's now been six hours and it has really reduced down. With the whisk down in there, there's very little left. It's still very loose, but it's a nice brown color now. And the idea of transferring it to a smaller saucepan was not a good idea. I tried it and the solids would sort of gather on the bottom in a clump or whatever and then a big bubble would form out of them and it would burst up through. It was almost like a volcano. So I figured it would be all over everything. I've continued using the uh, large uh, stainless steel pot here that I use to make my cheeses with anyway. At this point I'm going to add the pint of uh, heavy cream. As I said the instructions that I'm following are very vague. It just says after it has reduced a lot you add the cream. So That was 16 fluid ounces, uh, an American pint, 300, no, 473 milliliters. So that's more volume in there now and it will now take I suppose at least another another couple of hours before it's down into anything like a coffee or a fudge stage. I'll bring you back at that point. It's almost seven hours now and as you can see it's getting much thicker. Not quite like a toffee yet but it's, it's much thicker and I'm stirring it not continually but much more frequently. I don't want it to stick to the bottom or burn. I don't know how to describe the aroma from it, but it's very, very nice. It smells very good. It's different than anything, but it smells like something you'd really want to eat anyway. It's only been about 15 minutes since I showed you the last time. It's getting darker and much thicker. I'm scared that it's going to burn to the bottom. Turn the heat down just a little bit more. In the pictures that they show on the blog, that uh, I'll put the link to on the bottom of this below this video, they show it getting even a thicker consistency than this. It comes completely away from the, the sides and whatever. But I'm scared I'm going to burn it, so I don't know how much longer I'm going to go at this. All of a sudden, I'm an expert, though. <laughs> I've been reading further down in the blog and that big long word that I put up there that I won't attempt to uh, pronounce, the one, the kind that Halvor sent me and he told me that it was the most popular one in Norway and this blog agrees with you Halvor and it is made with a combination of cow and goat milk whey, uh, so 10 to 12 percent goat milk makes that one a little bit different I guess. And the one that I'm doing, the mysotoast or whatever, uh, it says in Norwegian 
Mycy, M-Y-S-E, means way, and Ost, O-S-T, means cheese. So, what we're making is a whey cheese. Even while I'm stirring this, it's getting harder to stir. I think I'm almost at the point where I'm going to take this off the heat and put it in a in the container to let it solidify and we won't know until tomorrow whether or not I get something that you can slice or if I get a spread. Either way I'm looking forward to trying it. I'll bring you back and show it to you in the container. Well, that's it sitting on my Jersey cow mat, place mat. <laughs> I got 640 grams out of the whey that I reduced, plus the uh, pint of heavy cream. And that's 22 and a half ounces, roughly, so one pound six and a half ounces. Not bad. Uh, I'm just letting it cool down to room temperature before I put a cover on that uh, what's a food quality plastic container. And then I'll refrigerate it overnight and tomorrow we'll find out if I've got a spread or something that I can knock out of the container and slice. But either way, I've been sort of tasting little bits that are left over in the pot that I was cooking it out of and it's it's very nice. Not quite the same flavor as Halvor's, but uh, as I said, Halvor's was made out of goat and cow milk, I guess, and also made by a professional. But we'll see what it's like tomorrow. Well, good morning, everybody. It is rested overnight in the refrigerator, and I guess as you can see, what I got is a cheese that could be sliced. This is the little piece of one that Halvor sent me that I managed to save. <laughs> I like it very much and I've been wanting to eat it, but I wanted to save a piece uh, to compare how well it's showing up on the video, I don't know, but this one is a darker shade of brown than the one that I made, and I'm not certain why. I mean, this is made with part goat's milk way as, as well, but also this had heavy cream added to it, and I don't know if they do when they make this one or not, Alvor. On the blog uh, that I'm putting the link down below, the recipe that I followed for making this, they say in Finland, it is, or in Norway, excuse me, it is traditionally eaten thin slice on bread with uh, raspberry jam. I don't have any raspberry jam, so I've gone with some of my homemade blueberry jam. We'll say this is how it's eaten in Canada, hell for. Um, I understand eating the cheese with something sweet. My favorite cheese, I think, of all the cheeses I've ever tried is one called Petit Basque. And you get it in the, uh, well, you can buy it in, in cheese shops, I guess, probably throughout Europe and probably over here as well. But it's made in the Basque region of France and Spain. Um, southern France, northern Spain, and it's what they call a pure burby. Uh, it's made of all sheep's milk. And that is traditionally eaten, and I've had it that way in the Basque country, with uh, a cherry preserve sweetness along with the, the, the cheese, which is a, a delicious cheese. But anyway, I will give this a try. I've been eating little nibbles when I was slicing it, but I haven't had uh, any on the cracker with the blueberry jam yet. Mm. It's similar in flavor, Alvor, but not exactly the same. And I think maybe softer. That might be the addition of the cream. Anyway, I hope if you are cheese makers and have leftover whey, that you'll give this a try. It's a lot of fun to do. I think the next time I make it will probably be in the winter time with the fire going in the wood stove in the cabin. This was over seven hours and uh, well, I don't think I used that much gas, but my gas range was going for seven hours, so that makes it a little more costly piece of cheese, but if I was using the wood stove to heat the cabin and made it, it wouldn't be any additional expense involved. Well, thank you very much for watching.